Hey guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, today we're gonna have a repotting video, but it's not gonna be one of my Phalaenopsis. That video will come, but I have another guy that is really pressuring me to repot him. I simply cannot keep up with his watering demands right now. He's pretty much like the fowls, but this guy is a little bit more dramatic. Here is my Dendrobium noboli Comet King Akatsuki. This is actually one of my oldest orchids. If you go back in time in my archive, you'll find my very first video in which I present my balcony and orchids. This guy is included. I'll link you down below to it and also to the video on this guy from four years ago. Just so you see how this guy used to look like and his evolution in time. It used to have, if I'm not mistaken, one single cane, mature cane, and that was about it. And if you can get past the cringiness of my first videos, then it's nice to observe how he used to look like and the changes that happened over the past four years. Now, Nobilis are great orchids. They're very hardy, very not demanding. However, they have one major drawback, especially during summertime. And this is they require tons and tons and tons of water. This is their growing period. New canes are produced with new leaves, which need tremendous amounts of water and nutrients to develop in order to get a spectacular bloom. And at this point, I'm completely, completely overwhelmed by some of my orchids, which are still in clay pots. That's not funny. So I want to focus on this guy today and the Phalaenopsis will come afterwards. So this guy has been through a lot, but luckily he's a hardy orchid. He's been through some sun damage, he's been through cold damage actually because I gave him a winter rest last year which went well except one day when it rained and there was a lot of wind, therefore cold damage. But the good thing with Dendrobium nobilis is that they are semi-deciduous orchids, meaning eventually they will lose all of their leaves. In my experience this happens in about two years, leaves last for a maximum of about two years and afterwards they just start to yellow and die off like so. This is very normal for the circuit and it actually means that if you have some damage on the leaves, you will not have to spend years and years waiting for that leaf to go lower and lower and new leaves to be produced. Not really, they will actually fall on their own and as you can see this is the damage from the previous year's cane. This is a new cane, although it doesn't look that way, but no worries, most probably next year these leaves will not be here. So that's pretty okay. This orchid is for me a reliable bloomer. It blooms year after year and the show is pretty, pretty great. And regarding expanding and new growth, he is uh, quite prone to create multiple directions of growth. I have three at the moment or four and we started out with one. Not to mention last year it created two sets of canes. So pretty soon this guy will transform into a specimen. Another good thing with Androbium nobilis is that the older canes can bloom again. If they have available nodes that didn't bloom, such as this one, there is a high chance that next year it will produce flowers from the nodes that didn't bloom the previous years. So that's a little history of this orchid and a little bit about nobilis. I think now it is time. Oh, I forgot one steak. Okay, so now it is time to try and unpot this guy. I suspect he does have quite a big root system. First, like I always do, I want to check if the root system is attached. Because my clay pots are not very good quality, they're also very, very porous. This means the roots don't really glue all that much to them. So I have the nice surprise with some orchids to actually not be very, very attached. And there you go. This guy is not super attached either. Okay, the good news is I don't have a lot of dead roots on this orchid. Whatever I thought was dead was actually pretty dry. As I was saying, this guy drinks a lot of water and it dries up really, really fast. However, everything that was dead and dried kind of fell into the medium and mixed up with the medium. So it's gonna be such a pain to remove them from the medium right now. And to repot orchids with wet medium is not what I would call very comfortable. So. What I will do first is just use whatever medium I still have in this pot and in between the root system because I will now remove the medium from the root system and see if everything fits into this plastic pot, which is slightly, slightly, slightly tinier than the other pot. <laughs> Maybe it's just an optical illusion. We'll see. If not, I'm just uh, gonna try to pick whatever I can from this medium and reuse it and whatever I cannot pick, well, that's that. So about the plastic pots. I just got some plastic pots. I actually purchased them from Ana Maria. If you know, she's starting to use semi-hydro pots and she just gave up her normal plastic pots, which I lack. 
So yeah, I decided to buy all of her pots and clean them and sterilize them and reuse them with my orchids. Now plastic pots, the ones designed for orchids at least, are not brittle with use. I have pots that are already four or five years old and they're not brittle. Now plastic in time does degrade to some extent in the sense that it becomes uh, more fragile and less flexible, but it really doesn't happen all that fast. So it's absolutely fine to reuse already used clear plastic pots. But of course they need to be disinfected. Luckily, plastic is one of the easiest materials to disinfect. If you prepare a bleach solution and treat the pots and wash them in that bleach solution, then rinse them while it's pretty much done. Plastic is a pretty smooth surface. It doesn't have pores, so pathogens cannot really hide in the plastic. So it's not like clay pots that they need to sit and soak in that bleach solution or you have to put them in the oven and all sorts of things. No, these are very, very easy to sterilize. I washed my pot, I sterilized it, and time to see if it fits my orchid. I hope it does. Let's see, first let's just uh, eye it a little bit. I think it will fit. I can make these roots fit. Yeah, that will do just fine. Androbium orchids actually really don't fuss about the size of the pot. You know how they say the smaller the better? That's relative, but they don't mind a pretty tight pot. Epiphytic orchids in general don't. So, I can reuse my medium because it is not degraded or anything of the sorts. My only beef with it is that I used the small ceramics as well and at this particular moment I don't have any other medium prepared with the bigger ceramics, but it's okay. And by the way, somebody asked me if small ceramics actually impairs root growth. And I would have to say that it depends on the orchid. If an orchid doesn't have very strong roots, it might, yeah, impair it. But if an orchid has very strong roots, there is no reason. And I will show you an example with my Vanda. It literally pierced through the microfiber, the root. So it's that strong. Roots need to break through the surface of the leaf or whatever they're sprouting from, so they do need to be kind of strong. But it depends on the orchid. However, I didn't really have trouble with orchids not being able to grow because of the small ceramics. I will give it that it's not as comfortable as bigger ceramics. And the whole air pocket situation is a little better in bigger ceramics, but I'm not complaining about the small ceramics either. It works, it's what I have, ceramics is expensive, you're just gonna have to deal with it. And he dealt with it for a year and everything was okay, so I'm not worried really. So now comes the tricky part where I need to find medium that doesn't have dead roots here. And I'll see, if it gets too frustrating, I'm just gonna rinse the medium, use it wet. My only problem with wet medium is that it doesn't go in the pot as easy as dry medium, as you can see. But if I must, I must. Depends what happens. Oh dear, I think I must. This will take an eternity. Okay, be right back. Okay, so what ended up happening was I was not able to remove all of those dead roots from the medium. I just had to sacrifice it. It's the very first time this happens to me, but there you go. So I prepared a new medium. This is about one hour later, actually. And the water sound you hear is the sink. When you rinse ceramics, there's a whole bunch of very tiny particles that gather in my little net. And so water drains very slowly, but I'll take care of it after this video. So let's get back to reparting. Now with ceramics, it's not that I have a love-hate relationship. It is mainly love, but I swear, the whole dust and particle situation is... Ugh. If ceramics weren't so good, I swear I would hate it. <laughs> If anybody from Ceramis is watching, you know what would improve this product? This brittleness that it has. All the dust and particles are actually due to mechanical activity. This thing crumbles really, really fast. I get it, it's porous, it crumbles. But if you do have the power and the will to improve this product, and you're watching, you know what you should do. You should try to make it um, maybe less porous. Think of the clay pots. I just told you that my clay pots are not so good quality. They're very porous, very brittle. You know they're cracking already. There are clay pots which still absorb water, but they're not as porous. You know, maybe try to go for a sort of ceramics which is more like that. I know that if you go overboard with this, the ceramics will not retain as much water, but I think we would all be happy with a little less water retained, but a cleaner product. I'm not saying you should transform it in Leka. I think somewhere in between would be much better because I swear this whole dust situation is just... No, it makes life miserable, it truly does. Alrighty, there we go. My dendrobium is completely potted up. All I need to do is add the layer of pebbles. 
since these dendrobiums do require quite a lot of water, I really don't want this water to evaporate very fast from the pot. So the layer of the pebbles actually makes sense, not only to protect the roots, given the soy kit and the dendrobium nobilis in general didn't really have issues with the roots being desiccated at the top. But for the sake of actually being more economical with water, I'm just gonna do this. Whatever bit of water I can save from just evaporating in the air, I will definitely save it. So there you go, as you can see, these types of orchids actually did pretty well in the clay medium. They would have preferred me watering them more often, yes, but that's not necessarily the medium's fault. But yeah, they do seem to enjoy this medium, do pretty well in it as long as it's moist. And I think with the addition of the plastic pot and the pebble layer on the top, I think from now on things will be a little better. Alrighty guys, so thank you so much for watching, hope you've enjoyed this. And you know the drill, if you did, give this video a thumbs up, a share would be wonderful. And if you'd like to watch other orchid videos from me on a regular basis, just subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And with that said, I'll see you all next time, bye! On the bright side though, I am pretty convinced that the Selagenia usitana is producing a flower spike here at the top. It is growing pretty pretty fast I have to say. And yeah, this actually makes me really happy. I don't know why, this is one of those orchids that I just want to see in bloom. It's not that it's fragrant, it's not supposed to be fragrant as far as I know. It's not that it's supposed to be this wonderful orchid that has amazing colors and patterns. No, it's uh, actually a bit boring, maybe, I don't know. It's just that I really want to see it, I don't know. Do you ever have the sensation about orchids which seemingly they're not special, but you just really really want to see them in bloom? That's how I feel about this one.